Hello everyone, in this guide I will show you many ways you can gear up any character from scratch with exotic and ascended gear. The focus on this guide will be to get stat selectable gear that can work with any build and sources where you can buy gear anytime you want multiple times. You will find plenty of timestamps below for each section I will explain if you want to skip to certain one. Before we start you should know that stat selectable gear means that the piece you will buy will not include any stats at the beginning but then you can right click, customize and you will see a list of stats where you can choose from. The stats here will be all that's available in the entire game. It will only be limited by the expansions you have. But if you have all of the expansions you should see all of the stats. As of the time I'm recording this guide, World vs World is the best source where you can get any gear for any character anytime. You will find this golem vendor with the name Unified Vendor System in any of the borderlands in World vs World. When you talk to the vendor, you will see multiple gear options that will cost some silvers and badges of honor. In the first tab, you will see heavy armor, second one will be medium and the third will be light. Also in the first tab, if you look all the way down, you will find all trinkets. Here is amulet, rings, accessories and even a backpack. And in the last step is where you can find all the weapons. Badges of honor is a currency you will get very easily as you do World vs World normally. So, by simply spending a little bit of time in World vs World, you will get a very decent amount of badges of honor and you can gear up any character you want anytime. I made another guide that explains everything about this vendor in details. I will leave the link for it in the description below if you want more information. Another very good source for gear in World vs World will come from the reward tracks. Open your World vs World panel by pressing B or by pressing on the castle icon on the top left and then go to the third tab where it says reward tracks. And some of the options that will be available here will give you some stat selectable gear at the end. All of them will work the same way. When you finish the reward track all the way to the end, you will get a chest and when you open it, you can have a stat selectable gear of your choice. On top of that, of course, as you finish the reward track itself, you will get plenty of rewards that will also include mystic clovers and other valuable rewards from the last chest. So not only is this very good for gear, it's also very good for profit. The reward tracks below will be sorted in an alphabetical order. So the first one in that list that will give stat selectable gear will be the crystal desert reward track. When you finish it, you will get this box and from it you can have stat selectable gear. This reward track will be available automatically if you have the pacifier expansion. The next one will be legacy armor reward track. And then we also have Triumphant Armor Reward Track. Those are the easiest and most straightforward reward tracks you can get from World vs. World that will give you stat selectable gear. And just like you can get them in World vs. World, you can also get them from PvP. So you can open the PvP panel from the swords icon above here, and then you will see Reward Track, and you will see here again the Crystal Desert and the Legacy Armor Reward Tracks I mentioned earlier. However, Triumphant Armor Reward Track will be only available in World vs. World, and Glorious Armor Reward Track will be only available in PvP. But the other ones I mentioned will be available from both sources. Also from World vs. World, from the Skirmish Reward Track, when you finish the Bronze, you will get Warlord Armor Box. And from here, when you open it, it will also give you stat selectable gear. This will be only available from the bronze tier. It will not be included in the other ones. However, in PvP, from the league rewards, you can get them from all tiers. So if you hover on each one of them, you will see at the end, it will be including Warlord Armor Box. Also from the skirmish vendor in any of the borderlands, if you go to the Ascended Trinkets tab, you will find those trinkets. They will cost memories of battle and some skirmish tickets, but they are ascended and they are stat selectable. Also keep in mind that those are one of the very few trinkets in game that are not unique. Which means you can have two mist band rings and two mist talisman accessories. Also this mist capacitor item, if you use it, it will enable you to reset the stats on the trinkets if you want. Don't buy the mist charge trinkets, they will only include the end of dragon stats. Which now is pointless because they are also now included by default in the other options from here. With that being said, if you plan on crafting legendary armor from World vs World, I would highly recommend that you save all your tickets as you will need tons of them for the gear. You can also buy them from PvP by talking to the Ascended Armor League vendor. But this time the currencies you will need will be PvP currencies. Another very good source for gear is Verdant Brink, which you unlock with the Heart of Swords expansion. Right beside the Shipwreck Peak waypoint, which is the spawn waypoint in the map, you will find this Itzel Mastery Vendor. 
To talk to them, you must unlock Edsel language from the Edsel lore. And from here, you can buy boxes of gear that will cost 500 airships and 1 gold each. Airships is something you will get naturally as you do events and stuff around the map. You will notice there will be only 5 boxes available. The one missing from here will be the chest piece. This is something you will get as a guaranteed reward if you finish the night meta in the map at the maximum tier. There is also a chance of getting it as a direct reward when you kill the legendary matriarch, which is one of the bosses that will spawn during the night meta. There will be also a smaller chance of even getting some ascended boxes, and on top of that you will get other good rewards like amalgamated gemstones for example, so overall this is a very good event to try and get for the sake of the rewards from it. For exotic weapons, there are some available options from the trading post called Iron Legion weapons. The only downside here is that they are not available for all weapons, they are only available for some of them. All of them are stats selectable, and they will include all the stats in the game as I mentioned earlier, and as you can see, the price for them is not very high. However, you can also craft them yourself if you have the proper discipline and the required recipe. And the recipes for them can be unlocked from the footsteps achievements, which you can find in the story journal, in visions of the past, steel and fire. You will not need to finish the entire collection for it, you just need to go high enough to unlock the recipe. But keep in mind that to craft them, you will need stabilized profit crystals that you can buy from the chart collector vendor in Eye of the North, and it will cost 3 gold and 1 blue profit crystal, which you will get by doing the Ice Broad Saga and End of Dragons Strike missions. You can also buy 1 blue profit crystal down here by exchanging 20 blue profit shards, which is also a currency you will get by doing the same strike missions. And by the way, even if you didn't need the weapons, this is also one of the very good ways to make gold from strike missions. And I have a guide on this in details, I will leave it in the description below. Also from the trading post, there are many options for exotic level 80 stat selectable back items, but as you can see, they are not exactly very cheap. And so if you want a cheaper option, I recommend buying rare backpacks that are also level 80 because the difference in the stats between exotic and rare will be really small. Strike missions are also one of the very good ways to get exotic stat selectable gear. When you talk to the runic armorsmith vendor in Eye of the North, which you can find in this corner of the map, very close to the waypoint, you can buy stat selectable exotic level 80 armor. This will be available for all weights, here you will find it in heavy, here will be for medium and the last one will be for light. You can buy them using some gold and karma, but of course this is very very expensive, or you can buy the same gear using some karma and one of those items. You can get those items as a lucky drop as you do strike missions from Icebroad Saga, but you can also buy them directly from the chart collector vendor in Eye of the North using some blue profit shards. Also from the same vendor, in the third and fourth tab you can get ascended armor. Each one of those chests will cost some blue profit shards and some gold, and from here you will find four different types. You will see Assaulter and Malicious in the third tab, and you will see Defender and Healer in the fourth one. Between all of those four options, you will have all stats available in game. But also don't forget that you can change stats for Ascended Armor and Weapons in the Mystic Forge. I have a guide that explains that in details, I will leave the link for it in the description below, and I will also leave which one of those chests will contain which stats to make it easy for you to choose. From the same vendor, you can also buy Ascended Weapons, but I don't recommend buying them from this vendor, because the stats you can get here are only the core Terrier stats. So you will not find things for example like Viper or Minstrel and such. Instead, I recommend buying Ascended Weapons from the Chart Collector vendor in Arborstone, and you will find him right beside the Strike Mission portal. The weapons here will cost also Blue Prophet Shards and some gold, but they will include all the stats in the game, not only the core Terrier ones. You can also craft stat selectable exotic armor directly. On the trading post, you will find a bunch of recipes for Harrier War Beast items. When you double click, this will unlock through all your entire account, and they will need you to be level 400 in the required discipline. Once you unlock the recipe, all of the items here can be crafted very easily, and the materials you need for them are not very expensive. When you have all the materials and you can craft the item, we can right click and customize, and you will see that it will include all the stats in game. 
known. Even though the required recipe will include Harrier in it, and even in the name of the recipe itself, it also includes Harrier. But as you can see, we can still right click, customize and choose any state in game, not just Harrier. Lunatic Armor works in a very similar way. You can craft it and it is stat selectable. However, the recipes for each one of the pieces and for the insignia itself can only be bought during Halloween. So if you have already done so, you can craft stat selectable armor anytime you want. Fractals is one of the best sources in the entire game to gear up your characters with ascended gear. From the buy 2046 vendor, when you go to a second tab, you will find the mist trinkets here. Those are the same trinkets that you can get from World This Is World and PvP, but the currencies for them is the pristine fractal relics, which you will get as you do dailies, and the fractal matrix, which you will also get as you do fractals. And the mist capacitor item that is needed to reset the stats is much cheaper to get from fractals. So I would highly recommend that you get it from here if needed. Even if you bought your trinkets from PvP or World This Is World, you can reset the stats by buying the mist capacitor from fractals. And from the bling vendor, you can also buy ascended armor and ascended weapons. The currencies needed will be some gold, some marks, which you can craft or buy from wood. This is wood. You will also need fractal research page, which you will get by doing the daily recommended, and fractal relics, which you will get by doing any kind of fractals, whether they are dailies or not. The recipes to craft is a grandmaster marks if you want can be found in this tab, and they will cost 10 pristine fractal relics each. So you can either craft the marks using those recipes, or you can get them from wood. This is wood. Also keep in mind that by doing fractals, especially in the higher tiers, like tier 4 for example, there is a chance you will get ascended chests as rewards. Raids is another good source to get ascended armor and weapons. You will need some gold and some magnetite shards which you can get by doing any of the raids. You will get them even if you do some failed attempts depending on your progress in each of the bosses. When you get any of those chests and double click, you will see Assaulter, Defender, Healer and Malicious options for each of the pieces. And as I mentioned earlier, in the description below, you will find exactly which one of those options will give you which stats. You can also buy ascended trinkets from the same vendor in the aerodrome. But the trinkets here will not be stat selectable and they will have specific stats. But if you talk to Glenna inside any of the wings, you will see other options. That will include some ascended weapons and ascended trinkets. They will all cost magnetite shards and some gold. You will see assaulter, defender, healers and militias. From the wizard's vault, using your astral acclaim, you can buy ascended armor and ascended weapons. But keep in mind is that those chests will not include all the stats available in game. They will only include core Terria stats. Now I will show you how to get a full set of ascended trinkets from Living Season 3, 4 and the Ice Broad Saga. And those are one of the best options to get ascended trinkets that are stat selectable for any of your characters. The first and most important map will be Bloodstone Fen. You will unlock this map when you have Out of the Shadows, Living World Season 3 and progress through the story a little. You will first spawn inside the airship here in the map. Just make your way up to the surface and then you want to jump all the way down. And here you will find the vendor where you can buy the ascended trinkets from. You can buy a ring, an amulet and a backpack from this map. The reason why I consider Bloodstone Fen to be the best map for ascended trinkets is because of this item, Bloodstone Capacitor. If you already have ascended trinkets from Bloodstone Fen with the stats selected, just double click on the capacitor while the items are in your inventory, they must be in your inventory. And when you double click you will get a confirmation message and this will reset the stats of whatever trinkets you have from Bloodstone Fen in your inventory. And the price to buy the capacitor is only 100 unbound magic which is extremely easy to get. The next map is Ember Bay. You will unlock it from Chapter 2, Rising Flames in Living World Season 3. And from here you will find this vendor, which will be exactly where you will spawn first on the map. And from here you can buy an accessory and a backpack. The next map is Bitter Frost Frontier. This will be unlocked with Chapter 3 in Living World Season 3. This will be the vendor where you can buy ascended trinkets from. To talk to them, go to that waypoint, Soros Eclipse, and then you want to go up this ramp. From here, we can buy rings, backpacks, and accessories. This map is also one of the best for ascended trinkets, because the currencies needed for them is very easy to get. You will find plenty of nodes around this area that you can gather, and you can do that on multiple characters to speed up the process if you want. And I have guides that explains all of that in details. I will leave them in the description below if you want. The next map in Living World Season 3 will be Lake Doric. And it will be unlocked with Chapter 4, Head of the Snake. You will find the vendor right beside the waypoint. 
and from here we can buy an amulet and a backpack. The next map is Draconis Mons and it will be unlocked with chapter 5 flashpoint. You will find the vendor also right beside the waypoint and from here we can buy a ring and an amulet. And the last map for Living World Season 3 is Siren's Landing. This will be unlocked with chapter 6 and you will find the vendor right beside where you will spawn and it's also very close to the waypoint. From here we can only buy an amulet. Also from Siren's Landing when you finish any of the hearts and then talk to them, you can buy backpacks. They will cost some karma and some of the map currency. So for Living World Season 3, I would highly recommend getting out of the shadows because from there you can get an amulet, you can get rings and a backpack and remember that you can reset the stats on them very easily and better Frost Frontier because it's also very easy to gather the currencies for them and from there you can also get rings, accessories and backpacks. Those two will be the most important two I recommend. The third one will be Ember Bay if you also want to buy the second accessory from here. From Living Season 4 there are only two maps you can get Ascended Trinket from. The first one is Sand Swept Isles. This will be unlocked with Chapter 2 in Living World Season 4, a bug in the system. You will find a vendor right beside the waypoint. From here you can buy rings and accessories and this will cost some volatile magic and the map currency Deflorite Crystals. The other map in Living Season 4 is Dragonfall. From here you will find those three volatile magic vendors. From the vendor south of the waypoint you can buy an amulet and from the one southwest of the waypoint you can buy an accessory. And from the vendor west of the waypoint, you can buy a ring. So in total from the three vendors, you can buy a ring, an accessory and an amulet. But keep in mind that before you can talk to each one of those vendors and buy anything from them, you need to finish one of the corresponding achievements for them. This will just require you to do some events around the area here to unlock each one of those vendors permanently. And once you do that, you can talk to them on any of your characters anytime you want. From the Ice Broad Saga, the only map you can buy Ascended Trinkets from is Bura Mar from the Stillwater's waypoint, talk to the humble stone vendor and you can buy an accessory using some eternal ice shards and karma. But you will notice that the item will be unlocked and you must finish a certain achievement for it. Only then you can buy it from the vendor. There is another vendor you can talk to called Bright Shore and from here you can buy an amulet also for some karma and eternal ice shards. You will find this vendor as the ruined hut point of interest which is in the aberrant forest area. And before you can talk to them, you also need to finish another achievement which is the hunger. Biora Marshes is also very useful for Living World Season 4. This vendor, which is right beside the Jorah's Keep waypoint, when you talk to them and go to the last tab, you can exchange eternal ice shards with some of the Living Season 4 currencies. And so by doing this, for example, you can get the currency for the Sandswept Isles and Dragonfall maps, which will enable you to buy the Ascended Trinkets I mentioned earlier. Eternal ice shards is a currency you will get tons of as you do anything in Living Season 5, but you will also specifically get a lot of them when you do the Ice Broad Saga Strike missions. And the very last source to get Ascended gear is by crafting them directly. You will need to be level 500 in the required discipline to do so, and the materials to do that will not exactly be the cheapest, but they can be an option if all the rest was not available for you. I also have another guide on Ascended crafting I will leave in the description below. If you found this guide helpful, please subscribe to the channel and give this video a like to see more guides in the future. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next guide.